a little while ago I made the pulse rifle from the movie Aliens and I've now decided to make the entire costume so I'm going to start off with the helmet. Make sure you stick around at the end of this video to find out where to find the free templates for this build and also please give this video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to this channel. Right, let's get cracking. So we start off with the templates. In the top right corner there's a scale so you can make sure they're printed out the right size and then all the parts are just cut out of a pair of scissors. Some of these parts are for the left and the right and some of the details only need to be drawn out on one side. These are then pinned to an EVA foam floor mat. This mat is about 7 to 8 millimeters thick. And then these parts are drawn around with the back of a knife. You could of course use a pen if you want to. Some bits are for the left and the right so all need to be flipped over. This mat is slightly thicker, this is about 10 mil thick and I use this for any of the detail pieces like the part that goes on the uh, ear. Once all the parts are drawn around, cut them out with a very sharp knife, all of the cuts are straight so you don't need to worry about any bevels or weird angles. This tiny piece here that goes on the ear thing needs to be about 5 mil thick, so I'll just take a 10 mil thick piece and cut it in half. You could of course buy the correct thickness foam to make this easier, but I just used what I had to hand. Same thing for the part that holds the lamp on. Any parts where you need to glue the textured side down, I always rough up with a rasp file first to help make the glue stick. Lots of hot glue on this bit and I stick it down to another piece of 10mm thick foam as it's got to be double thick and once that's stuck down I'll cut it out, that way the parts perfectly align. Now the edge of this is going to look crappy because it's two bits of foam stuck together, so I've got a 2mm thick sheet of craft foam that I'm going to use to cover the edge so I'm just going to glue that down to one side lining up the uh, straight edge perfectly and then just glue round the piece and wrap it up once it's completely wrapped up you just trim the overhanging edge with a pair of scissors I'll make this edge the edge that is uh, on the inside of the helmet these lines on this earpiece are just burnt in with a wood burner. You could also use a soldering iron for this. And then that part is glued on. More hot glue to attach the pieces together. Don't go too mad otherwise it will seep out the edges and make a mess. But if that does happen you can always wipe it away with your finger before it's fully cooled down. Another piece I could have done with slightly thinner foam for, but making do by cutting it down in half. And then this strip is then cut in half again to the right width to be the detail pieces. These are the two parts that go on the back of the neck. Now all the parts of the main helmet need to be curved into shape. I do this by using a heat gun and heating them from the back. You can't use a hair dryer for this because it just doesn't get hot enough. So you need a heat gun to do this. So just heat them from the back and then shape them with your hands. Be careful not to burn yourself because the foam does get really hot. So start with the neck pieces. These trim parts are then glued on using the templates as a guide for placement. This bit's a bit more tricky, so I pinned every piece into place first and then took them off one at a time and glued them on. Now onto the main helmet. Again, these parts have all got to be heated and curved into shape. It's a bit more tricky. Just make sure you heat it evenly on the back. And then I used my hands and the corner of my table to bend the parts into shape. Once all the parts are curved into shape, I tape them into place, making sure to get the edges perfectly lined up, because you're going to want nice tidy seams. Once the parts are taped into place, 
every part of the seam, every little last millimetre of the seam needs to be taped up because I glue this from the inside. So now the parts are taped up, I'm slightly pulling the pieces apart on the inside and running glue down the inside of the seam. Now to add on the uh, trim to the front, now this needs to be nice and flat so the texture on the back isn't going to allow that to sit flat so I trim that off with a really sharp knife just to get that to sit flat and then the edges need to sit at a, a more a smaller angle so they need to be trimmed down too. So I'm just beveling the, the sides of this. So that now sits a lot lower. A bit of glue along one edge first. Wait for that to fully set and then do the same to the other edge. And then you can run glue on the underside of that part to stick the front down. Now this helmet's a bit weird shape, so keeping that tape on the outside so your seams don't all split apart, heat the inside and then you can reposition that until it's the shape you want it. I'm now heating up the bottom edge of this and then folding it out ever so slightly to give it a slight lip. Again, make sure you haven't taped the tape off on the outside otherwise all your seams will come apart. Cutting out a part of the helmet for the earpiece to go in. These parts that need to be glued to the side, I give those a slight curve as well to help them sit to the contour of the helmet and then rough up the back with a rasp file again before adding some glue and sticking them down. The same thing for this bit that holds the lamp on. Now this bit here that covers the ear needs to angle slightly in, so I pin it into place bend it in till I'm happy with the angle and then glue it from the inside. And that's the basic shape of the helmet all done. So now onto the neck pieces. This part here gets glued directly onto the back of the helmet. I'll just use some pins to mark out where the center is and where the edges of this should line up and start with a tiny bit of glue in the middle to glue this down and then when I'm happy to with the position I'll glue the left and the right side down too. This part here that flaps down over the back of the neck I glue a two inch wide strip of craft foam to the back of it and then leaving about a five to ten mil gap I glue that to the back of the helmet that will allow that to, to move as you tilt your head back if you want to look up. I'm gluing in some upholstery foam now to make that sit nice and snug to my head. Moving on to the lamp. You could use a real lamp for this but I didn't have one I didn't really want it to light up anyway. So I've got the front end of a lamp that I've got left over from a previous project and I'm going to use some kitchen roll tubes that I've cut down to make the lamp. Again if you wanted to use an actual torch you need to find one the right size and and shape to fit with the look of the helmet and I, I couldn't be bothered to find one so I thought it would be quicker just to make one. But it wouldn't be too hard to have a functioning lamp in this, you could even just gut out a real one and build this as you see here but put the internals of a torch inside it. So just cutting out a bit of circle foam and sticking it in the end of the cardboard tube there to plug that up and in the same way as you wrap that earpiece a bit of glue on it and then wrap it round and this I'm going to mark the edge with a pair of scissors and then cut that off so it's nice and straight and goes all the way around and then more glue and then wrap that up and that should fit perfectly. Trimming the excess off with some scissors, more glue on the end and then stick that down with some craft foam and again trim it with some sharp scissors now cutting out at a, a beveled angle 45 degrees roughly to make that sit nice and flush to the to the helmet
using a pipe to cut out perfect circles and then a pin to get that piece out of the end of the pipe. If you want smaller circles, I use a pen lid, sharpen it up a little bit of my rasp file and then in the same fashion, just drill that into the foam, twisting it back and forth until it cuts all the way through and then use a little pin to get that out the end there. I usually then trim these down to the right depth of my knife, cutting out some detail pieces and these are all just glued on. And that's the finished lamp, those little circle things are uh, meant to be little knobs and buttons and things. And then that's just glued onto the side of the helmet. Those beveled parts we cut out earlier make that sit nice and straight. And using a heat gun to gently heat the tape to make it easier to come off without leaving any sticky residue behind. Now for the mic, this is a piece of aluminium rod. Just cut that for hacksaw, use a file to get that nice and smooth. Marking out where I want that to go in that earpiece and just stabbing a hole with a pair of scissors. And that just push fits in, didn't glue this in or anything. And I bend that with my hands and then later on with a pair of pliers. For the actual mic tip, this is just some craft foam again that I'm wrapping around. This isn't actually glued onto this. I can then slide that off and then put glue on the end so I can make the edge of that so you can't see the metal showing through. Then trim around the end of that with some scissors and then you can slide that back on over the aluminium rod. I haven't glued that in so you can twist it and turn it to be in front of your mouth or to move it away from your face and reposition it as you want to. The whole helmet is then heat sealed with a heat gun. So before I paint I like to prop the helmet up on something so I can get at all angles at the same time. Mask off the end of that light and then the first two colours are sap green and raw sienna. Mix those together to get a kind of an olive green colour. And then just brush it all on. Now for the second coat, I added a little bit more brown to make it a little bit more olivey. It wasn't as olive as I'd like, more forest green to begin with. So a little bit more brown this time, and it's a lot more olive. I ended up doing three coats of the green paint. And this is the helmet all done after three coats of green. The whole thing was then lightly sprayed with some clear lacquer. Moving on now to add the camo patterns. This is the same raw sienna and a bit of primary yellow mixed together. Now the camo pattern, I just drew the outline on with the paint first and then when I was happy with the position I then went ahead and filled in all of those areas. The reason we lacquered this is so that if you do this bit wrong you could just wipe away the paint without damaging the green underneath. And this is after one layer of that colour, then went back and did a second coat of paint and then eventually a third because this is this is going on really thin for some reason this is the full camo pattern of just that first color after three coats the second camo color we're adding is burnt umber this is a brown paint i used two coats of this And this is all the brown areas added on, two coats. Moving on to the next colour, this is just black. I only did one coat of black paint. And just apply that in the same fashion, drawing in the outlines first. And then filling the areas in. This is all the black paint added. And finally some titanium white, and again only one coat needed with this, this covers really well. 
and these are more just lines added on here and there. And that's where the white area is added. Now I know you're thinking this looks really garish, but don't worry, we're going to weather that soon. But before we do, the whole thing needs to be covered again with a light coating of clear lacquer. You can now unmask that lamp and onto the weathering. So this is just watered down black and brown paint. Then you're just going to dab that on all over, doing small areas at a time, and then blot that off with a paper towel. Once that first dirty wash is completely dry and it needs to be 100% dry, you can go ahead and add on a second colour. This one's a lot darker. This is mostly just black with a tiny bit of brown and you apply that in exactly the same way. I made sure I kept some of this in the little nooks and crannies and stuff just to make it look like a bit of a build up of dirt and grime. And that's the helmet completely weathered. Last thing to do with that black paint is just to co uh, colour the knobs and the buttons on the lamp. Got some metallic silver paint now and I'm just going to dry brush some of the raised areas to look like battle damage where the paint's chipped away and exposing the bare metal underneath. It's a very tiny amount of paint on the brush and just getting those e edges. Only thing left to do paint wise is to lacquer it one more time. Now onto the strapping system. This is 10mm nylon webbing. This goes around the helmet. Just pinning that into place. And then I've got 20mm webbing. 6 inches and 10 inches. That's going to make the chin strap. Very minimal sewing needed. Before we do though, I'm going to use a wood burner just to seal the ends up so they don't fray. And I've got some 20 mil buckles here. Pin those into place and these bits need to be sewn. And this bit is the part that actually goes under your chin. Got some little slides there. That just keeps the excess strap nice and tidy. And then the male end of the buckle just slides over. So the bits that are pinned just need sewing. Just gonna sew these by hand because it's such a tiny amount to sew. No point getting out of the sewing machine and then you're going to need to cut a groove into the earpiece to thread that nylon strap through. Using a pair of needle nose pliers just to pull that through and that's going to be hot glued into place and then the other one is going to be glued on the opposite side making sure that both buckles hang at exactly the same height. Lots of glue to hold those in And then you can just do that up. Last thing to do is just to add that mic back in and job done. And here it is all finished. One completed Colonial Marines helmet. Now as always I'm going to show you some footage of this from various angles just so you've got some better reference images should you want to make your own. There you go, done. One nice easy build, very inexpensive and very quick too. If you want to build one of these, you can need those templates that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. You can find those at the Facebook group, the Perfectly Imperfect Makers Community. There's a link for that down below at the video description. Also, you can find some uh, social media links there to my Instagram and uh, my Facebook page. Make sure you give those a like and a follow as well, please. And uh, yeah, that's it. Keeping up for the next video. So be sure to subscribe to this channel because I'm going to be building the rest of the Colonial Marines costume. So that's going to comprise of the uh, body armor and the uh, shin guards that will be coming up soon. Um, until then, remember, you don't have to be great at making to make something great. Bye-bye.